All right, this project's going to be a, well, a leather book cover. It's, I was asked to make a journal. What I wound up getting was um, I found a sketchbook that's, oh, I think it's eight and a quarter. Yeah, eight and a quarter by five and three quarters approximately. And then, oh, I don't know, about three quarters of an inch thick. So it's a pretty standard sort of size sketchbook that I think they'll be able to keep getting. Um, but anyway, what I did is I traced around it, rolled it up on its spine and around, and I could have probably done this with just math, knowing those measurements. I traced around it again, and I came up with this rectangle. Now, again, eight and a quarter wide, I knew that. But five and three quarters should be, um half an inch shy of 12 inches, right? And then three quarters more should be another quarter inch past 12 inches. So you could have kind of just measured this out and come up with that, but it's actually gonna be just a little bit off from that. It's probably gonna be, a, in this case, it looks like it's about an eighth of an inch longer than that because you actually have to wrap around those corners. So your leather's gonna need to add on to that too. So you're gonna wind up with wrapping even more around the corners and you're gonna need a little bit extra around that but that's going to kind of be the next step is of course I have to add on where I'm going to do my stitching around the edges which I could add all the way around the edge or I could just add on to two sides and twice as much which is what I'm planning on doing in this case uh, and then of course give myself just that little bit of extra for the leather to wrap around now I don't need to give any extra really uh, on this eight and a quarter I just have to put in my uh, to stitch on the top and bottom But I do need to put a little bit of extra on that side So let's say we're gonna add three-eighths of an inch for a seam allowance uh, Let's go ahead and put three-quarters of an inch more all the way around Now, once I've got it wrapped around, I'm just going to kind of be guessing where everything's going to go because I want to make this a little bit more organic, not just square, square, square. So, we're going to wrap out and around. Put our snap out there. And I want to leave room on the front cover to um, tool on it. I don't want to swing in that much because we want to leave still some down here. I guess I didn't need to mark those corners, but okay. There we go. That looks like a nice curve. This little corner down here is going to be kind of swinging in the breeze, but I think it'll work okay. Just go ahead and roll that out a little bit because that's going to just fold over. We can have a few of our pages kind of showing down there. That should be our main piece. Like I said, we're going to have a strip stitched on here and a strip stitched on over here. And those just need to be, those do just need to be regular rectangles. Uh, probably, let's say, whatever this length is, nine inches. Yeah, we're right about nine inches by, oh, uh, at least two and a half. Let's say nine inches by two and a half. 
think I even managed to draw this right way around, but I did cut this off and have to tape it back on, so that's how my brain's going today. Uh, but we'll get this traced. Cut out, and we'll cut our other pieces out. I'll cut uh, one of those strips out of there and one off over here somewhere. Now for the two and a half inch by um, for these end pieces, which actually I need a little bit longer than this, uh, I'm just going to mark using the end of the pattern. I've got a line at two and a half, but I forgot that I need a seam allowance there. So I want to do two and a half plus about three eighths of an inch. So two and seven eighths. Almost just make that three and call it good, right? So this side is going to be pretty easy to line up. It's actually going to be on the inside of it. Uh, but the pockets to hold each side of the cover. But on this side, it's going to be a little trickier. So what I actually did is I did put a pencil mark on the back. I normally don't do that, but that'll help me line up this piece when I need to put it on and get it glued in place. But then I can take a ruler along there and a freehand stitching groover and just go right along that ruler and cut a groove. You can technically just do this with your regular stitching groover too. I have a freehand one laying around. Yeah, then the rest of it is just using a regular stitching groover. Next step, let's do a little bit of edge beveling and then we can get to putting our carving and decorations on. Now on the back side of it, uh, again, because these pieces are gonna be on here, I don't need to edge bevel right there because I want this to be, you know, a nice flat where they come together. I don't want that edge gone because then they'll have a little gap there so i'm going to use those pieces real quick to judge where i need to um actually do some uh edge beveling Now, since this is such thin leather and I don't want it to distort while I'm carving it, I'm going to put some tape on the back of it. You can do a lot of other things, but I prefer just using packing. Uh, something I picked up years ago from somebody and it's always worked really well for me. All right. Time to wet this down, figure out where we're going to put our carving stuff on it. Now I'm not going to carve the whole thing, but I am wetting the whole thing down so I don't leave watermarks where I don't want them to be. The requested pattern was a mushroom and frog. I want it to be on the front of the cover, but not where it's going to be covered up by the flat part. So I'm going to kind of figure that out with the book. A little sketchbook that's going to go into it. So it needs to be right around in here somewhere. I kind of leave a finger there so I can know where I'm at. We'll put our little froggy down there. Now, this is just something I sort of sketched up while looking at a cartoon frog. And for some reason, everybody always, for a mushroom, they use the Amanitas. But they're just pretty mushrooms, I guess, is why people go for them. I 
right. The only other thing I need to carve on this would be a set of initials. And I'll put those up here on the part that becomes the flap. And I'm just going to use a kind of a fancier, larger lettered craft aid for it. Um, it's got a number on here if anybody's looking for them. I don't know if they still make them or not. I'd have to check. The important step on any carving is to use a strop and polish your swivel knife. There's basically no such thing as polished enough. You just keep doing it and it'll work better and better. Uh, but if you don't, it'll just keep working worse and worse. Basically, uh, the smoother this edge is, the shinier it is, the easier it'll drag through the leather without um, additional drag. So it should be mirror polished along that edge. If you've got any lines you can see in it, any scratches, those are going to catch in the leather and cause trouble. Okay, that's a little bit better angle. We'll see if we can see something better from there. Basically, what I'm doing with the swivel knife here. Now I would not suggest for somebody who's not familiar with this tool to push it anywhere um, like I just did across here. Uh, you should always try to pull it. It's easier to control. Uh, but once you get good with it, you can start disobeying some of those rules. And you can change your grip on it and push it. Usually I do so by sliding it back into um, further down my finger and then I can push it along and then I change my grip back to uh, the fingertip for pulling it. And on details like this you can cut shallower and it'll make it a little easier. But you got to be somewhat careful with that, uh, that you don't make it too shallow for what the rest of your carving is, because then you're just going to uh, mash it when you go to bevel it. Again, I'm not necessarily concerned about following my lines, because these are irregular shapes, but for the most part, this type of mushroom is red with white polka dots on it. So in actuality, it's just big chunks of white stuff that's stuck to it in the real world. But the cartoon version of it has polka dots. Now there's a few spots like on this A where I actually went out past the line accidentally. Uh, let me get a different tool to point it out. The line is actually right here that the craft aid made. And I swooped out just a little longer. And you want to, if you ever do that, avoid that tendency to, oh no, and just cut straight back over to the line and leave yourself a sharp corner there. If you start out a little bit wide on something like this, you can just kind of keep going a little wider around that. And just as long as you make it that sort of graceful curve, it'll work out. But if you start going, oh no, I missed, and then just start another cut, you've got a little bit sticking out here, or you've got... A flat part there and it doesn't look right so sometimes if you make a mistake you can just sort of oh we're just gonna keep on swooping by and you'll make it it'll work out so things to watch for while cutting especially when you're a little out of practice
thought of touching up on this frog with a modeling spoon. We need to round a lot of things out because, you know, frogs have a lot of rounded edges. We want round eyes. We want round on top of his head here. And of course the mushroom as well is all round. So we want to round out those corners a bit too. All right. <clears throat> Let's take a little bit of a matting tool and go around and spread our background down a little bit. <laughs> First, and then we're going to do some paint on the frog and so on, the mushroom. And to dye this quickly, I'm putting gloves on because I'm going to just use a sheep wool scrap and some light brown oil dye. Instead of a dauber, when you got a large area like this, you can cover it a lot faster with a piece of sheep wool. Alright, now this is mostly dry, so I'm going to go ahead and peel the tape off the back of it and do some painting. For the painting, there's going to be some washing, there's going to be yellow on the frog and then green, and there's red and white. I'm going to use an antique white um, on the mushroom. paint on everything. Now to make things more interesting, I just accidentally splattered red paint all over the place. So our yellow is actually going to be a little bit more orangish. Um, I don't think I got it in any other colors though. I'm actually going to use the yellow as a base coat on the frog. Like I said, I'm using an antique white sort of paint here. So it's not quite bright white. I think that looks pretty close to what mushroom stems usually look like. Right. Now that we've got a yellow frog, we can turn him into a yellow and green frog once that yellow paint dries. But while we're waiting on that, we go back to the mushroom. Now I'm going to paint these white spots probably after I do the red. Um, So let's go ahead and get that done now. Okay, I won't know until I'm editing at what point I stopped filming and at what point I was just talking to myself here. But um, what I've done recently is I colored the letters with some black paint, the frog's eyes with some black paint, the white dots on the mushroom, and I took some green on the frog and basically I put it on all the legs and the face and around the sides and then I rinsed my brush out and I took extra water and kind of spread that out a little bit to get some of the yellow to show through and to just sort of pull some of the green over the yellow here on his belly to make him look, you know, a little more natural. Um, I might still take a little bit more green in there too while we're at it. Just to hit some of these areas that got a little too yellow, I think. A little too many brush strokes in there. Now, since we want this to look like a happy cartoon frog rather than the soulless monsters frogs actually are, uh, let's go ahead and take a little bit of white and add some reflection on those eyes to just make him look a little bit nicer. 
Now, let's let that dry thoroughly and I'll put some finish on it. Okay, let's get some finish on these pieces and go ahead and get this put together and finished up. So normally I would go for a spray finish on something that I've painted like this just to prevent smearing it around. But on this one I'm going to go ahead and risk just going and using the regular resiline that I like so much for most of my other jobs. And I think I'll get away with it just fine. Uh, but definitely if I did any antique stain I would want to use a spray finish over top of it. And I may go back over the frog with another finish as well to add some gloss to him. You know, because frogs are wet. One thing about using the uh, wipe-on finish like this as opposed to a spray finish is I am picking up a little bit of the dye as I move it around from various places. And then when I go over things like this white, I'm actually taking a little bit of that light brown dye and mixing it in that white. It's making it a little bit more off-white, but it's also bringing out like the gills on the mushroom and things like that. Kind of like an antique stain. Wood. Now it is a fine balancing act to do, but sometimes you can actually just use what other people might consider a mistake. If you're expecting it, you can use that to help bring out some of your carving. Alright, now a little bit of glue, a little bit of stitching, don't forget to finish up the edges. And it's all going to be put together and done. So. Alright, I'll trip down to the sewing machine in the basement. And I'm going to stitch all the way around this. Yeah, so. Touching up and finishing the edges a bit here. I trimmed them to match each other. Any place that they were overlapped. Alright. And one last thing is to put the book in it. And I'm going to figure out where I'm going to set a snap to close it. So we're going to put a snap out here. About yay. And we're going to put it just a little bit short of that. Where I kind of made a dimple there. And the reason for that is because the thickness of the snap makes a difference. You won't quite be able to snap it if you try and put it all the way out. Now, take a scrap of leather, stuff it in here, so we can punch our hole without hitting anything. this hole. Start the cap in that side. Slash journal with a frog. <laughs> <laughs> 